Okay, so one more thing to throw at you there. So we talked about how we would go from a pure substance to an impure. Same sort of principle applies when we're dealing with a molecule. Now let's go ahead and we'll use glucose again because that seems to be kind of easy. So I've got this glucose guy here. Well, I might have some impurities in that reagent. I also might have some water molecules that get stuck to that guy. So just the way that reagent is prepared, I end up with a chemical or a reagent that now has water in it. So we would see something like this written as glucose times, in this case, three waters. The problem with that is when I'm in the lab, if I'm working up a solution and all I have on my shelf is glucose times 3H2O, I have to correct for that amount of water that's there. I can't just measure out however much I would need of the glucose. So it kind of plays the same role as those impurities that we talked about um, in my percent purity uh, supplement. So let's go ahead and look at one of these problems that involves hydrous and anhydrous. And I'll show you how to do it. So let's go ahead and say it would be an easy one. Okay, number three here. So you need to make 100 milliliters of a 10% ferric chloride solution, solution using ferric chloride, so FeCl3, times 6 H2O, meaning that the only ferric chloride I have on my shelf is this stuff that's connected to my water. So it tells me that I have a molecular weight of this guy of 270.300 grams. It also tells me here that my anhydrous, let's try here, anhydrous FeCl3 has a molecular weight of 162.300. So it's telling me how many grams of this guy am I going to need to make 100 milliliters of a 10% solution. So the way Gary's got this set up, it's not necessarily a hard problem, but now we've got to take into account this anhydrous hydrous thing. And in this problem number three, he actually threw in a percent purity as well. It said, hey, this guy's only 98.9% .9 pure. So let's do it, because it's not that bad. So I know that 10% is telling me I would have 10 grams in every 100 milliliters. So it works out kind of nice. I know I need 10 grams of um, ferric chloride. Now I like, like I mentioned, stop and say, okay, 10 grams of what? Okay, ferric chloride, duh. But this is pure ferric chloride and also ferric chloride without any water attached. So this would be 10 grams of the pure anhydrous ferric chloride that we need. But I know that what's on my shelf is not pure and anhydrous. I've got a percent assay or a percent purity of 98.9, .9, and it's stuck to these waters that I can't pull off. So I need to correct that 10 grams. So I always like to do the hydrous anhydrous part first, but it doesn't really matter if you do percent purity first, you're okay, or if you go to the hydrous anhydrous part first, you're okay. So, and really it's pretty simple. If I know 10 grams is my anhydrous weight, what I need to find out is how much the hydrous stuff would weigh. And I can use the ratio of my anhydrous molecular weight compared to my hydrous, or sometimes you'll hear this called hydrated molecular weight. So I simply set this up. The ratio of my anhydrous to my hydrous is going to be the same as the grams of anhydrous that I know that I need compared to the grams of hydrous that I need. So in this case, I know that I would need 10 grams of anhydrous. What I don't know is how many grams of the hydrous stuff I would need. So I use this ratio, which in this case is 
270.3, oops, sorry, 162.3 anhydrous compared to 270.3. So what I end up with here, make sure that you can see, 162.3 over 270.3. I kind of like to write anhydrous, anhydrous here, so I don't get these confused. And it doesn't matter which is on top or which is on the bottom, as long as it's the same over here. Equals 10 grams, that's what I determined I would need if it were anhydrous. And what I'm trying to convert to is how many grams of the hydrated stuff I would need. So I cross multiply and get 162.3x equals 270 0.3 times 10, and go ahead and crunch that guy out, so 270.3 times 10 gives me 2,703, if I divide it by 162.3 to get my x by itself, I get this value of 16.654 grams. Now I like people to stop as they're doing this and think, okay, what does that mean? So 16.654 grams of hydrous um, ferric chloride. So I've now corrected for this difference in the weight between my pure anhydrous stuff and my pure hydrous. But it's important to note that this is still assuming that my compound here or my reagent is pure. So now I need to make that last step where I say, We've got 16.654 grams of pure stuff, and I need to know how much of the impure, or the 98.9% .9 pure stuff I'm going to need. So when I do 16, and I just leave it right there in my calculator, times 100 divided by 98.9, it tells me you are going to need 16.839 or 16.4 grams. And now when I look at that I say this is 16.4 grams of impure anhydrous or sorry impure hydrous ferric chloride.